and welcome to Once Driven Forever Smitten. This is my Cavalier GSI 4x4 converted to a 3 litre V6. It's a car I get asked about more than any other one. There's, there seems to be a lot of interest in it, so it's not quite ready to go on the road properly yet, but I thought we'd do a video now just to explain the story of the car and what the plans are for it. So let's go and take it for a drive. <clears throat> Kind of holding the revs a little bit, it is cold this morning. That's it dropping down now. Are you gonna move? Too slow. One of the things people are often interested in is how does the car drive? Because Vauxhall never, obviously never produced a V6 Ford before, although they did think about it because in their part catalogue there were downpipes to accommodate the four-wheel drive transfer box, even though the car was never put into production. Now, what's been done on the car is it runs a Cavalier 2.5 V6 C25 XE manifold and sump and engine management setup, uh, and underneath that is the 3 litre X30 XE engine from a Omega police car. The engines are basically identical externally, so you can swap everything over, um, which gives you an immediate 40 horsepower uplift. You get from 210 from 170. But that's not all. All the V6 Vauxhalls came with uh, a very heavy flywheel which blunts the performance um, when you're taking off. You've really got to dig them hard to make them go. This car doesn't have that. It runs an F28 six-speed gearbox from a Calibra turbo, which was also found in the Cavalier turbo along with the, the full drivetrain, basically. It's got the five stud hubs all round, the braking system. Well, it's actually got the brakes from a uh, a Vectra V6 on the front, which are a slightly different size. But the key to transforming the way that the V6 drives is get rid of that flywheel. And if you connect a V6 to an F28 six-speed box, it totally changes the character of it. It's such a lively, free-revving engine. And you'll find that the low-speed response and the torque off this is fantastic. It's not a car that Vauxhall built, but it's one that you could definitely see that they, perhaps they could have if they'd gone a different route at one point from perhaps the turbo engine. Proper dirty looks from bikers there. Okay, so this is my Cavalier GSI. It's a 1991 model year J registration. The car was produced on the G to K plate. Uh, there wasn't a lot changed during that time. Uh, the early two-wheel drives, uh, some of them didn't come with catalytic converters on them, but all the four-wheel drive ones did. Um, there was one revision uh, after 1991, which basically was only changing the Griffins from square to circular, and the steering wheel changed shape very slightly. And the car was, of course, superseded in October 1992 by the Cavalier Turbo 4x4. Now, the 4x4 Turbo version was a far more accomplished car than the GSI. The four-wheel drive version, which you see here, started off with 150 horsepower, 5-speed F20 gearbox, and to be honest, it was a bit much for the system. The two-wheel drive car 
is far better. Uh, it's much more lively and it just feels with a four wheel drive system in one of these like it's bogging it down. Uh, so I had bought this car back in 2006 uh, for the price of £500 plus £70 to get it through the MOT. Uh, now the prices of these have gone up quite a bit in recent years and the price of this one uh, back, well, if it was in that condition now, it would probably be quite a few thousand pounds. It had 106,000 miles on the clock and it had been wax oiled underneath, which was one of the keys as to why the car had survived so well. Uh, because these were terrible for rot. Uh, going back, I remember sort of when they were 10 years old, not even 10 years old, and some of them were falling apart. The sills were coming out them, the chassis legs. You would see them sitting really low at the back end because the springs would be sitting on the floor. There'd be no chassis rails left. But this one had been rust proofed and it had also lived in the south of England all its days. Um, and when I spoke to the seller, I said uh, it's got optional air conditioning, which I was uh, interested in because there's very few Cavaliers have got air conditioning as an option. The Diplomat and the CDX, excluding the turbo diesel, had it as standard. The GSI was a very rare optional extra. Now, um, when I got the car, he said the four wheel drive doesn't work and also that the aircon doesn't work. Uh, so I put the fuse in the four wheel drive at a later date and it started working and I got my mate Brian to convert the aircon system from R12, because that's how old it is, to R134A and it worked as well, which was fantastic. And I drove the car for about a year uh, and got a bit bored of it because it's only got 150 horsepower and with the four, the four wheel drive was okay, it had great grip in the wet, but it just wasn't fast. It wasn't a car that had dated particularly well, especially when you take into consideration things like the modern turbo diesels that were out at that time. So something like a, you know, a CDTI Vectra, I wouldn't leave it for dead, you know, and that's like an LS version. So something had to be done to improve the power, but what? Of course, the main part of what's different on this car is the engine setup. So I'll show you under the bonnet, but it doesn't just have a different engine, but it's also got uh, some optional equipment uh, fitted at the factory and fitted by myself that you don't normally see in a Cavalier. So there's some complicated stuff going under the bo on under the bonnet, which makes it rather more temperamental and complex than a lot of other Vauxhalls from the same era. The V6 was the largest capacity engine that Vauxhall put in the Cavalier with the 2.5 models which came badged just as a plain V6 which was changed to a GLS and you had the Diplomat which was the highest luxury spec one which was in turn replaced by the CDX as a run out model which didn't have quite as much kit on it. This uh, C25XE setup came from another Cavalier. We've got metal cam covers here from a Vectra which are supposed to seal better uh, but this engine still leaks a decent bit of oil out of it anyway, even though it's been rebuilt a couple of times. So that's either down to my incompetence or it's just the way it is. Probably a mixture of both. But underneath the bonnet, you'll see here, we've got the accumulator for the air conditioning, which takes up a fair bit of space in there. I have um, worked to keep the air conditioning on the car. At the moment, there's a hybrid aircon compressor on it, which has got the clutch and the pulley of a later model fitted on in an early type compressor. That's a job for the spring to get the aircon working again on the car. There's no reason why it shouldn't. Uh, if you look in here, this is where the four-wheel drive 
accumulator bulb is. This needs to be changed and it was uh, subject to a recall many years ago. I've got a new one there for that. A lot of Cavalier and Calibra turbos. When it comes to the four-wheel drive system, all this has been removed and it's been replaced by a locked box which greatly simplifies things. You fit locking rings into the transfer box which gets rid of all this. This is a complicated setup and it can be prone to failure. Uh, back in the day, these were known for causing issues, although a lot of what was causing the issues has now been discovered, so um, you don't need to necessarily worry about it so much. But I've kind of fought to keep that in the car. If it blows up again, because it has done once before in 2012, it's getting changed to a locked box. But for the moment, it's okay. Sitting here, this is a cruise control unit. No Cavalier ever came fitted with cruise control. Um, I was in the process of rewiring, so there's bits just sitting there at the moment. But yeah, I've got cruise control wired to the car. You'll also notice here, maybe if you know your Vauxhalls, there's no ABS unit here either. I've deleted the ABS off the car. Over here, we've got the master cylinder from a Cavalier SRI from 1990, which didn't come with ABS as standard. The reason being, these early ABS systems aren't very good. You can tramp the brake pedal and you really won't get much braking. The ABS will get confused uh, and it can lock the wheels up. If you get rid of it, you get a far harder, more progressive pedal with far better bite to it. And I've also done that to my Cavalier CD as well because I'm not a fan of Vauxhall's early ABS. Obviously, as time went on, they improved that greatly. Now, what you won't be able to see is a whole load of stuff because this takes up so much space in the engine bay. If I was to show you the engine in the 2.0-litre Cavalier, there's so much space, they're so fantastic to work on. This is less so. Most of the jobs you would need to do on this would necessitate taking the engine out. Thankfully, that's not actually that difficult a job, and I've done it that many times that it doesn't take that long. But um, I've replaced the steering rack twice in it, and I've done a lot of surgery to the bulkhead where I basically triple skinned it a few years ago, the last time the engine was out in 2017. Uh, but down underneath here, we've got the F28 six-speed gearbox from the Calibra and also the transfer box. So there's a lot of weight over the front end of this car. It's quite nose heavy. Uh, so the handling is quite different to uh, other Cavaliers or um, Vauxhalls of a similar size. But what it makes up for it is having that four-wheel drive system because you've got vast amounts of grip. It's, it's a car that doesn't have a lot of feeling and engagement in some ways with the handling, but it covers ground so quickly for an old car. You're going point to point, you can really get going if you've got an open road. So it's a car I would really love to take to Europe in 2022 and give it a good long run, see what it can, see how it copes with it. As, but the only concern is, the sheer complexity of the car, the amount of wiring, and the fact that it's just not easy to get into things if something goes wrong. Another thing, the engine isn't standard in the car either. It was at one point a standard 3-litre V6 straight from the Omega. Over time, that specification has changed. The car has had three or four major rebuilds over the years. The first one happened in 2007, where a conversation at Trax um, came up with the idea of putting a V6 into a four-wheel drive Cavalier because, to our knowledge, I was working at Total Vauxhall at the time, it had never been done. So the car was taken up to Andy Specs, also known as Specky, who was famous at the time for driving the uh, Tigra, which did so well at 10 of the best. 
amazing mechanic and fabricator. He got to work on the car and he fabricated a completely new set of downpipes from scratch because the way that they come down from the V6 engine, they have to go round the transfer box, which is a big part of it. Uh, so we weren't exactly sure what we were doing with, it, with this. I bought a complete Cavalier V6 for spares and we took everything out of that that we needed um, and got it running on the standard Cavalier four-wheel drive system, which at the time meant F20 four-wheel drive gearbox, which was five speeds close ratio, which wasn't ideal. It didn't suit the character of the V6 because it was revving so high on the motorway. We needed to change that, uh, so I went and got the F18 wide ratio gear out of gearbox from a Cavalier LS, which I removed on a really cold day in a driveway at somebody's house in Bristol, which meant that the car basically had one, two, three, four, and then a six gear. You were missing fifth, but it meant it would cruise better on the motorway. Now, the next build came along in 2010, and that was when I got hold of a Calibra Turbo for £500, which was a great price at the time. They're obviously worth a lot more than that now, but even at that, it was a bargain. Uh, we broke that up for spares. I think I sold the engine for a grand, and it meant I had the gearbox, the hubs, um, everything that you would need to convert the car to uh, turbo spec, four-wheel drive, transfer box, bigger prop shaft, so that all got fitted, and I also got hold of a Calibra SE9 from You Pull It, and got all the parts from that as well. So I got the dash clocks, the BBS wheels that you see in the car are from a Calibra SE9, uh, and a few other bits and pieces from that car as well, including the front calipers, which are a slightly different size to the Cavalier Turbo. They're 280 as opposed to 284, and they're much more common, cheaper to buy discs for. So in 2010, when I was working in Total Vauxhall, the car got rebuilt again, and that was when it was much more like it is now. And that's when the car began to realise its potential with that six speed gearbox and it, that transformed things. Those six ratios are perfectly spaced out and you've got something at any point and the car will sit and cruise at 100 miles an hour all day if you wanted it to. through to 2012 was a really good period for the car. Um, we had uh, Total Vauxhall live at Castle Coombe two years in a row uh, with John Cleland along and Jim Pocklington brought the 1990 Cavalier BTCC car as well. So that was fantastic. I was out on track the same time that John Cleland was out driving the BTCC car. He overtook me. We used this as the camera car. I would love to know if anybody has photos of that because we did a couple of laps at Castle Coombe with Steve McCann, the photographer, hanging out the window of this, photographing the touring car. So it was amazing. It doesn't really get any better if you're into these sorts of cars. Um, so it rolled on through 2011 into 2012. March 2012, uh, I'm in Falkirk, 
and the accumulator bulb pops. I didn't think it needed changed, but as it turns out, it did. And that basically rams fluid through the transfer box, blows it to bits, Trans uh, ATF all over the road, not good at all. So that meant that the car, I decided it was gonna need another uh, round of rebuilding work because the engine was leaking oil and there was a couple of other things I wanted to do to it. Um, and then things went from bad to worse. With the car off the road with a knackered four-wheel drive system in 2012, uh, I happened to be able to purchase a lot of rare V6 performance parts, uh, a set of four Piper fast road cams, a set of ported cylinder heads, an enlarged throttle body, um, a set of Magnacore plug leads. So these were all great things which you don't, don't come up very often. So I purchased all them to go what was already on the car um, uh, tubular downpipes and an exhaust system made by Welsh Coast Customs when I was still uh, down in England. They're over in Newport, South Wales, and that was done in 2010. With all these performance car parts available, I decided to take the engine out again, which I would have to do. So we did that and I decided that rather than have the car parked up for an extended period of time I would fit the 2 litre 8 valve engine from a Cavalier SRI which I did and then I got it running and then disaster struck where one of the wires shorted out for the uh, windscreen wipers and nearly set the car on fire burning right up into the back of the dash. Now the car's been through a couple of different variations on suspension. In 2010 I got a set of yellow Bilsteins which are, as far as I know, considered about the best shock absorbers you can get. And I also had a set of, can't remember what lowering springs it was, it might have been Spax. But as it turned out the car was too low, it would be just about okay if you didn't have anything in it. As soon as you put a couple of suitcases or any luggage in it, the back end's sitting too low, the tyres are splaying out. Um, I also kind of discovered that the car would sit extra low at the front, I think because of just the weight that's over the, the, weight that's over the front wheels. So, um, laterally I changed the suspension, so it's still got the Bilstein yellows on it, one of them's leaking on the back, so I'm going to change them. It's also got a set of KYB standard spec, uh, Calibra Turbo was the part number they came off of, but obviously the same as the Cavalier, standard springs, which has got... A little bit of a gap there. I'm not bothered about having the car too low to the ground because I, I like to drive it. I like to get out onto rural roads, fast A roads, B roads, and you can't be bottoming out and cracking the exhaust off things and knocking the sump. It's just, it's not good. But the car sits in the, the ride quality is really good on it. It's almost like an original ride quality, but it's got a nice bit of firmness, good bit of body control to it. It did well at Castle Coombe uh, as well. John Clellan did comment that I was having understeer issues, but... That's just the way that it is. It's got a lot of weight over the front end. As I mentioned, it's a car that will go really fast point to point on the road. And you can throw it around on a track as well. You just have to be mindful of the overall balance. Um, at the moment, I've got, I think it's EBC uh, drilled and kind of uh, grooved discs on it with the 288 brakes. People have said, you know, you upgrade to 308s and things, but I don't really want to do that because as it sits at the moment, I can put 15s on it if I want to, which means I can get winter tyres on it. Um, these brakes are plenty enough for it. You get some good presses out them. Uh, it's got Cooper Xeon tyres on it at the moment. You need to change all four tyres at the same time with a Cavalier 4 before because the tyre depths all need to remain with a bit and about a millimetre of each other, which is one of the big problems back in the day when people had fleet cars. They would go and scrub the front tyres off and then it would chew the transfer box up because the tyres are rotating less on the front than they were at the back. Now, on the inside of the car, you'll see 
that being a Bordeaux red model, it has the grey interior, or at least Vauxhall called it grey. We probably all referred to it as cream or beige. I've always thought the Cavalier had uh, a good modern dash layout that lasted. It stayed kind of fresh long after the car had gone out of production. Um, it's pretty standard in here. We've got some changes. Those are CD door cards as opposed to the GSI ones. These are the standard GSI seats. Any Vauxhall sports model of this era had these similarly styled, you know, well-bolstered seats. The GSI versions are quite a lot softer. They're uh, differently padded to the SRI. We've got the three-spoke leather steering wheel. That's the 1992 version, which is a bit thicker. Uh, we've got the Calibra SE9 clocks in here, the white electronic 160mm dials. I've got the extra gauges down there, also out the SE9. You can see there, there's our aircon buttons. And if you look down here, we've got the heated seat switches, which are, as of yet, not wired in. I do have a heated seat kit to go in it. We've got the velour floor mats, uh, some wiring hanging down, just pretend you didn't see that. Some velour floor mats that came out the CD. I need to get a bit of a clean up in here because it's been in the garage. It's quite dusty inside. But you'll notice down here on four wheel drive Cavaliers, there's a hump in the floor and that there is to accommodate the transfer box for the four wheel drive. But aye, right, the GSI overall spec is standard. You got an electric sunroof, you got four electric windows, you got a trip computer, you got a slightly upgraded tape deck stereo. Um, I have added to this, of course, it's now got cruise control. Um, and what else did I add to the interior apart from that? I think that's pretty much it. So it is quite a well-appointed car as standard. These were expensive and had a lot more kit in them than an SRI, which is quite a basic car in comparison, but it was also about £5,000 cheaper. Okay, with a slight complication with the video, my new microphone doesn't have a low battery alert on it, so it cut off. So I'm back out the following day finishing off the video. And unfortunately it's not as nice and it's a bit later on. We've got some sleet, the car's registering just above freezing on the temp readout. But I should mention, when I was talking about the technical spec of the vehicle, my brother-in-law Neil also made a fantastic set of tubular manifolds for the engine as well, which uh, were fitted post the uh, fire rebuild. So it'd be interesting to see what power this engine kicks out now with the cams, the heads, the throttle body, the downpipes, the manifolds, the magna cord leads. I would like to get it on a rolling road because it's never actually been on one and I'd be curious to see what it's doing. I'd be interested to find out if I can get it remapped as well because it runs the C25XE management, which is the old kind of, you know, pronged chips in an ECU. It's not something that you can flash. I'm not sure if somebody can actually do that, but it would be good to find out what power it's kicking out. The standard X30XE in an Omega is 210 horsepower. So I'm really not sure what this would be making. I did have the three litre injectors in it, but I took them back out because the fuel economy was quite noticeably worse and I suspect that the 2.5 management was overcompensating on the fuel with those injectors, just a guess. But I mean overall, I mean I've kept the car for this long and I've persevered with it because I like it so much. It's an old car which has got a lot of modern features in it that you probably wouldn't expect a 30 year old Cavalier to have with the six speed box, the cruise control, the air conditioning, the four wheel drive system. It's a great car to drive over long distances, it's great when you're in full attack mode going point to point and in weather like this, in the cold, the rain and the sleet, the car really comes into its own. I know that it's not ideal to be driving rust prone classics in weather like this but this is where the car can really show up some modern vehicles.
bodywork wise, uh, the car's had some paint over the years, some of it's original, it's not perfect. Uh, we'll get there in the end. The biggest change, uh, the most important thing on the car was these rear arches. When I bought it in 2006, that was the worst part, was the fact that the rear arches had rotted out and had another set welded over the top, which were then rotting out as well. Specky uh, did a huge amount of work and did the best wheel arch job I have ever seen in a car. They were done in 2007 and it hasn't been painted um, since then and the finish is just phenomenal. There's no sign of any rust coming through there at all. So that was really fantastic to get that done. Um, later on, uh, I got this spoiler fitted. This is an armchair spoiler and one of the uh, few things that you could spec on a GSI as an optional extra and I just wanted that because the car's got the four-wheel drive, it's got the aircon and I'm looking to get heated seats installed on it as well. I've got the heated seat pads out of Extra CDX sitting there ready to go into the seats at some point once I get an upholsterer to sort it out. So the wax oiling on the car saved it. Um, it remained pretty solid uh, throughout. I've had to do work on the bulkhead because of the sheer stresses of the V6. Uh, it said welding on the sills at the back of the floors. My brother-in-law Neil did some fantastic work putting in a section of chassis leg into the car, maybe in about sort of 2014, 2015 I think. So in terms of the handling, obviously we've got a fair bit of weight over the front end, so you've got to watch because it will have a tendency to oversteer, but it's really predictable. And with the four-wheel drive grip as well, it, it's surprising what you can do with the car. It's excellent on back roads like this, it's really stable and sure-footed. And it's also easy to drive quickly as well, because there's just that instantly available low and mid-range torque. And it just gives you so much confidence in the car having that that grip and that flexibility. It's something that you can really get into a nice rhythm with. This is a very steep hill we're coming up to up here, so this will be a nice demonstration of the torque that the car's got. Now come down here in third, and we'll just give it a wee. Fourth, hit the hill, and up we go. Fifth, still going. Sixth, still going. Beautiful. Oh, it's getting snowy up here. Road on left closed, oh. Alright, okay. Uh, so overall, it's it's solid, it's an honest car. I'm not saying it's never been welded and it's not going to need welding work in the future, but it's uh, overall, the, the structure of the car is in overall really good condition. I mean, that really could have been the end of the car at that point. Um, it had melted a, a substantial portion of the loom. This is right up the back of the dashboard, so what I did was um, I decided to see if I could fix it and I wasn't sure if I could so I removed the dash and I pulled the entire wiring loom through the bulkhead uh, and then I took it apart in my living room and painstakingly repaired all the wires which took a long time but I did manage to get it sorted out which was good. Uh, the process was slow going from there but we did get the car built up again, this time with the performance components on the engine, got it back on the road and it ran really well. Uh, throughout 2018, the car didn't give any problems at all really. I did 3,000 miles in it, including a trip to England where 
I had the job interview for my day job on truck and driver and it did absolutely fine. Um, some of the other changes to the car that I have done during the process of rebuilding it focus on the interior. There's a few changes that I've made to that and there's a story there where uh, that's how I came to own my Cavalier CD, the blue one, because I originally bought it to get the dash and a couple of other bits of trim out it, but it turned out that it was far too good to scrap, so I've ended up keeping it all this time as well. Well guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed the video on the GSI. I've certainly enjoyed making it. Hope it's given you a good insight into the car. Hoping to get it out extensively in 2022. Get a good few thousand miles on it and really get it up to that standard that I've been hoping to get it to for quite a long time. Ha <laughs> ha.